Some of my best ideas literally fall out of the sky. Oh, look at that. It's a cell phone plop. Won't that make a great project? Let's get started. I love technology, therefore I like to integrate it into my sewing room constantly. You're like, right? You're all watching me out there on YouTube, so obviously you love it too. So yes, the cell phone plop is a fantastic little device that you can use to keep your phone or your tablet or whatever next to you wherever you're at. Now this is kind of funny though. Here is my original little plop, and you'll notice that she's pretty firm, right? So I used a suede fabric um, for this, but it didn't have as much flexibility, so she's not the best cell phone phone holder. So at any rate, we're using the Crossroads Denim today. It's a wonderful, very um, nice, pliable, but strong denim. It's from Indigo Junction, comes in a variety of wonderful colors, and it really gives the wonderful amount of plop and texture we need so we can just drop our devices. Whoops. We can just drop our devices in however we like and have fun with it, okay? So we're just going to do like yay with the Crossroads, but when you're using your Crossroads denim, there is a bit of texture to it. So I like the real textured sides to be my right sides. So I have both of my right sides together before I go ahead and cut out my shape. But you're saying, Rob, what shape are you going to use? And in the description below, we've got a link for our free printables. And here's the shape you're going to use. I need you to cut out two of them. And by laying your fabrics right sides together like this, you actually are cutting them both out so that they're facing opposite. So you are ready to go right from your cutting to your sewing machine. Okay. We're going to leave this opening when we sew. So those teeth right there are going to kind of keep our sewing intact. And then, so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and just make a nice, easy little cut. And you can do this with scissors, you can do this with a small rotary cutter, whatever you like. And you could pin your pattern in place if you needed, but you're cutting both layers at once. So if for any reason it wasn't perfect, it's okay because they're both the same size, right? This is a little heavier fabric for the small blades on these cutters like this, but it still works really nice. Here. Okay, we're just going to finish this out real quick for you and head on over to the machine. Now, while I'm finishing the whittle, <laughs> I can even just move this out of the way. There we go. Nice and easy. I really should have pinned my pattern in place. I was just trying to go a little fast for you. And when I don't pin my patterns in place, things shift. So take a moment and pin it down. You don't have to go as fast as I am. You have more than a few minutes to do this in. Okay. We're going to cut this section out. That's going to be our opening that we're going to leave for turning right sides out and filling up our plop. So let's move this stuff out of the way and head on over to the sewing machine. Now, because we're making more of an industrial style tool, we're using polyester thread in the machine for the top and the bobbin. And I do have my little edge guide on that's going to help me keep my quarter inch seam allowance. Makes life easy. And let me just point out here real quick, I am going to start my sewing on the outside of the tooth, go all the way around and finish on the outside of the tooth here. Okay, so you're going to want to back stitch so that when you tug on that, it doesn't burst open. And then we're just going to go around real easy by keeping both layers of that fabric up against that edge guide. I've got a little extra pressure on the outside fingers here that helps those curves. See how easy that works? And sewing through this wonderful lightweight denim is a dream. And then I come around tight on that corner, back stitch. I went a little past the tooth, no big deal. We have plenty of room to work. So we're just gonna cut that thread there. And then for this, it's very simple. I'm gonna go ahead and poke in there and start turning my right sides out. I will fill this with the crushed walnut shells. And for this size plop, I have found that two and a half cups of walnut shells are perfect. Of course, it's not necessarily a washable project, so you could use poly pellets, um, but you want something that's gonna be heavy. You don't wanna use just batting. It won't give you enough security to hold it in place. And then I wanna show you, you probably saw me using one of my new rotary cutters that I just love. 
The other part of this tool that works so nicely is the back end, of course, cover your blade with your cap. The back end works as a point turner or a hair marker. So I am gonna take a moment and smooth out those seams all the way around the inside like this. Okay, so that's ready, ready to go here. You will hand stitch that after it's all um, filled up, nice and easy opening. Then I actually just took an old piece of my Mylar uh, template making plastic, rolled it up and taped it. It makes a fantastic funnel. And I've already pre-measured my two and a half cups of walnut shells for us. And we will see how this goes. So I'm just gonna slowly pour in what I need. I actually usually work out of a little uh, measuring cup scooper, but I love the Mylar because the walnut shells slide in nice. And then once it starts to slow down, you can just come in here and shake it like this and the gravity will start to fill that up. Okay, so that's real simple. Fill it all up with your two and a half cups of walnut shells, hand stitch it closed with that same polyester thread and you're all set. However, as I mentioned, not all uh, cell phone devices are created equal. So I wanted to play with an additional style plot. I'm not gonna sew you all the way through it, but I wanna show you how you can make a slightly larger version. Okay, this was something else I was working on in the last moments of getting prepared for today's tutorial. And I really like this for those little bit larger devices, maybe a smaller tablet, something like that. So it's the exact same size walls from your uh, free printable, but I've also added in here a one and a half inch strip by about 24 and a half inches just to separate it and give me a little more girth. And now this is filled with three cups of the crushed walnuts, not the two and a half cups. So here's how you'll build it if you choose. You will have your two pieces cut out, you'll have your strip. The easiest thing to do is to start by sewing the strip to one of the walls. And I literally did start right on, let me see if I can hold it still for you. I started right on that tooth, like I said. Then I stitched all the way back around and up to that same mark, right? What's gonna happen is I'm gonna be able to leave this opening in here and I'm gonna leave a little bit of an extra opening because it got a little cramped when I was trying to turn it right sides out. Remember, experience is our best teacher. So. In order to set up this second side, I'm going to align my teeth. I'm gonna pull this back and I'm gonna go right here where that one was folded over. That's where it starts on that tooth. Very easy, I'm gonna pinch here and go to the sewing machine and then I'll just stitch all the way around and I will do just the same, turn it right sides out and fill it. But I'll have to hand stitch a little bit along this edge and then I'll have to hand stitch that opening because it's a little bit extra fabric, a little bit harder to turn out, right? But like I said, I wanted you to have a fantastic variety of all kinds of different ways to prop up your favorite technology devices so that you never have to be without me right here at Man Sewing.